to really understand the when, where, and why of the late heavy bombardment, you must go back in time. Around 38 million years after the Big Bang, in fact, when the universe started to shape itself into what we know and can see today. When the Big Bang happened, the universe was created in less than three minutes. At this point, the universe was much too hot and violent for atoms to exist. There was only energy. Not until 38 million years later did the universe slow down enough for energy to transform into subatomic particles, which is the first matter to exist. The very first elements were created in the core of a star in a process called stellar nucleosynthesis, where chemical elements can assemble, the first of which were hydrogen, helium, and then lithium. The death of a star is the creation of the period 4, 5, 6, and 7 elements in a process called supernova nucleosynthesis. When supernova explode, they have profound effects on their surroundings and galaxies. The energy of the explosion also synthesizes new elements, particularly those heavier than iron. These fresh new elements are then sprinkled into the surrounding gaseous medium, enriching it. And so, the later generations of stars formed after the supernova contain more heavy elements than previous generations. The enrichment of the gas in our region of the Milky Way reached such a point that a sufficient quantity of heavy elements existed to give rise to life, as we know it here on Earth. Supernova are thought to be directly responsible for us all. This is a protoplanetary disk, which is a disk of dense gas and dust that surrounds a new star. Small pieces of dust will coalesce to form a larger mass. The greater the mass becomes, the more smaller particles attract to it via gravity. Eventually, this will turn into a solar nebula that will evolve into a planetary system. What was once a star surrounded by dust and gas is now a star with orbiting planetoids, resembling a solar system. However, these young planetoids have not yet been set into their orbital paths because of collisions still taking place within the system. The giant impact theory states that an asteroid roughly the size of Mars impacted the Earth during its formation. This Mars-sized asteroid was named Thea, which means goddess or divine in Greek mythology. The impact resulted in rocky surface material being blown outward from the Earth, some of which accreted to form the Moon. This theory explains the similar oxygen isotope ratios between the Earth and the Moon, as well as the Moon's lack of an iron core. It also accounts for the angular momentum that was necessary for the Moon to reach its current position. All of this led to the late heavy bombardment, which is thought to have existed sometime between 4.1 and 3.8 billion years ago. This was an extremely violent time on Earth. Extrapolating lunar cratering rates to Earth at this time suggests that the following may be true on our planet. There are 22,000 or more impact craters with diameters of about 12 miles, 40 impact basins with diameters of about 620 miles, and several impact basins with diameters around 3,100 miles. Life on Earth had finally been given the chance to grow and evolve, and it was. Unfortunately, the late heavy bombardment had yet to happen. Although much of the matter had been enveloped into the planetoids up to this point, 
there were still many smaller bodies left over, not considered large enough to be deemed planetoids. These comet-like bodies ended up in a large ring called the Kuiper Belt. The best available model of the late heavy bombardment suggests the giant planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune migrated around the solar system at this time, with their gravitational poles slinging asteroids and comets towards the inner solar system. These water-rich objects may have provided much of the water in the Earth's oceans. As you might have noticed at the top of this model, it is suggested that the late heavy bombardment lasted 1,000 million to 2,000 million years. Even though this model is widely accepted, the length of time in which the late heavy bombardment existed is still under much scrutiny. Today, much of the evidence of a late heavy bombardment is hidden under billions of years of erosion and shifting plate tectonics. But there is much more apparent evidence that we can see almost every night in the sky. It is easy to identify the massive amounts of impact craters on the moon's surface, indicating a similar situation for our Earth. Although it might seem that the late heavy bombardment, which is commonly referred to as the lunar cataclysm, had a very negative implication on our planet. But the opposite is quite true. It has been surmised that many of our precious metals arrived on the Earth's surface through these impacts. Materials like silver, gold, and platinum. Earth's original supply of these elements had sunk into its molten iron core as the planet cooled. Thanks to the new supply of rare metals, we are now able to mine for them today. Much of our technology heavily relies on these delivered metals, as they play a huge role in wiring, circuit boards, the ability to resist rust, or endure extreme temperatures. Perhaps the greatest threat to humanity now is the possibility of an impact similar to those in the lunar cataclysm. Around 26 to 30 million years or so, a mass extinction occurs. One theory is that every 30 million years, the Earth is subject to heavy bombardment by asteroids or comets. Most scientists have agreed the dinosaurs became extinct around 65 million years ago from a major impact, not volcanoes or climate issues. This is a red flag for us today, considering we are definitely past due. On its way to the impact, the asteroid pushes aside the air in front of it, creating a hole in the atmosphere. The atmosphere above the impact site is removed for several seconds. Before the surrounding air can rush back in to fill the gap, material from the impact escapes through the hole and follows a ballistic flight back down. If the asteroid hits the ocean, the surrounding water returning over the hot crater floor is vaporized sending more water vapor into the air, as well as causing huge steam explosions that will greatly compound the effect of the initial impact explosion. A large enough impact will break through the hot lithosphere, and maybe the even hotter asthenosphere. Although this appears to be completely destructive, many people believe this is where life had come from in the first place. According to the theory, panspermia, meteorites are responsible for bringing this first primordial life to Earth. The theory holds that either very simple forms of life, or the materials necessary for it to form, are carried to Earth on comets or fragments of asteroids. These survive their journey through the atmosphere and ultimately evolve into the species we see around us today. Certain amino acids, which are the building blocks of life and are necessary to building proteins, have been found by NASA on comets. Analysis of some meteorites has suggested that amino acids and other organic compounds may have formed in space or on another planet light years away.
Large impacts can blast thousands of cubic kilometers of vaporized material and planet sediments into the atmosphere, expanding into space and enveloping the entire planet. These high-energy, vapor-rich materials re-enter the atmosphere and heat up air temperatures to the point that the Earth's surface is consumed by fire. In the year 2028, the asteroid 1997XF11 will come extremely close to Earth. If it does hit Earth, what you will have is a mile-wide asteroid striking the planet's surface at about 30,000 miles per hour. An asteroid that big, traveling at that speed, has an energy roughly equal to a 1 million megaton bomb. It is very likely that an asteroid like this would wipe out most of the life on the planet. To try and understand 1 million megatons, we will use a small scale reference. Let's say that an asteroid the size of a house crashed on Earth at 30,000 miles per hour. It would have an amount of energy roughly equal to the bomb that fell on Hiroshima, perhaps 20 kilotons. An asteroid like this would flatten reinforced concrete buildings up to half a mile from ground zero. Needless to say, we live in a very fragile state of existence on many fronts. If we don't get hit in the year 2028, perhaps we will in the years to come, reverting our planet back to how it was in the late heavy bombardment. It won't be the first time it happened.